How many of you knew that tune? Oh, quite a few of you. How many had never heard it before? Uh, it's almost time. Well, that about suits us, because we didn't agree either, so. <laughs> today that there was a very colorful poster. This came out of the Living Lutheran magazine this month, and we decided, I decided, since most of us don't get the Living Lutheran magazine, that it would be a good opportunity to have you see this piece of artwork so you can stop by the bulletin boards, or during my message today you can take a look at this. So uh, this one's laminated, so it'll go around pretty easily. It has a lot to do with how we live our lives in God's will. Since you and I belong to the rock of God, Jesus Christ, we should know Christ. We should feel Christ all the time in our lives. You know, as good Lutherans, I think we understand a lot. I think we understand the sacraments. I think we understand the nature of the church. Sometimes we find it political. Sometimes we find it disagreeable. Sometimes we find it wonderful. I think we know the nature of the members of the church. And we think we probably understand the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and at times we have not wanted to hear a word that the national church body had to say. And at other times we cheered because of what they said. But in the midst of all of those things, do we truly know Christ in our hearts? Does Christ impact us in such a way that we cannot stand to see the things that are listed on this poster? Hunger, nakedness, thirst, shelter, a fair share in the world's resources. As the children of God in Jesus Christ, do we really know Jesus? Do we know that he was a social activist in his time? He came not only to save people, to teach the word of God, but he came to present what God hopes and wills for all people, all of his children, all of his created people, not just the ones who follow Jesus, not just the ones who follow Allah, not just the ones who follow YHWH, go ahead and try and pronounce that. We have a way to say it, but you shouldn't, it's offensive. You should say the Lord instead anytime you see it. It's offensive to Jews if you try to pronounce that word. They believe it's too holy to be pronounced. But God's people are all people. They are Buddhist, Muslim, Shinto. Here it comes, folks. Hang on to your seat. Grab, but grab the bottom of your seat. Atheists and agnostics. Everybody, everybody on this planet is God's child. If we truly know Christ, I'm going to insult you, okay? If we truly know Christ, and we are the body of Christ, the living word of God through Christ in the world today, and Christ died for all people and said, I am the only judge. Then how should you and I be living with the least, the last, and the lost? With the children, the seniors, the Muslims. In my day, it would have been with the Catholics. With the Jews, with the Buddhists, with the Shintos with every person of every religion in the world, 
As Christian people, what do we have a tendency to want to do? We want to judge them. If we really know Christ in our hearts, we need to resist because that temptation is one of the greatest temptations in our lives to want to judge other people. I saw a movie that I am going to highly recommend to you. And I can recommend it to you without reservation. It is theologically astute and right on the mark, and it's called The Shack. If you have not seen that movie, I invite you to see it. Well, right now it's on HBO, but it's also, I think, available on disc. You could not buy a better movie than this movie. But watch out for the first 20 minutes because you'll wonder where you're going and what's going to happen. But what happens is beyond wonderful. Today, if wisdom puts you on the judgment seat and said to you, and you have two children, and said to you, okay, you want to be judged. And you do it all the time in your life. So today you have to judge which of your children will go to hell. I hope your answer would be, but mine would be, I can't do that. I can't do that. But we want to judge other people, and often to the point of condemnation. And what does wisdom tell us? We can't do that. We should know Christ so completely in our lives that we understand that that role only belongs to Christ and Christ is likely to be way more lenient and forgiving than you and me. Maybe that bothers us. Maybe it bothers us that Jesus would be way more lenient and forgiving than you and I would be. As Lutheran Christians, we understand many things that have come to us from God. But the question is, do we really know? Are we really compelled by the power of the Spirit to live our lives in a way that dictate, that's dictated by the actions of Jesus Christ? I'll tell you again, yesterday I pulled up to a corner. Aho Road and Kinney Road. My boys will tell you there was someone standing there. Two people, as a matter of fact. An older gentleman and a younger woman, and they had a sign on the bottom of their backpacks that said, Dog. Any of you see them out there? Yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't go by them. I knew they needed Christ's help in their lives. The response to Christ's grace is amazing. I took $20 out of my wallet and handled to, handed it to the gentleman, or was it James? You did. Were you in the front seat or was it Jesse? James. And he looked at me in shock. And my only words to him were, God bless you. I hope this helps. I probably should have said, I want you to know that Christ loves you. That's what everybody we meet needs to know. That just as we have been loved by Christ, Christ loves all people. All people. Even the murderer and the criminal. Christ doesn't turn his back on anybody. Because the hope is always that they will come to know Christ's love. 
How does that happen if you and I push people away? How does that happen if we're unwilling to take the risk to be the Christ to people? It can't happen if we're unwilling to do that. We have to allow the Spirit to guide us in such a way that we really are compelled to be the Christ in all situations. And is there a cost to it? You bet there is. There is always a cost to faith. There's a cost to being the people of God in Jesus Christ. Yes, the gift is free, but there is a cost to discipleship. There is the cost of living with what we know we have first received. The love of God in Jesus Christ. It's going to reach a point where Melody's not going to allow me to have cash in the car. I can't go by people, I'm sorry. Because I know that person, whether they're panhandling and don't need it, or panhandling and on their last breath, they need to know that they are loved by God. Because how fast do you and I forget that we're loved by God? What does it take for that to happen in my life? And I'm not starving. As you can tell, I've been starved for a long time. I'm not homeless. I am sheltered from the heat. I am sheltered from the cold. I ride comfortably when, no matter what the weather is. I have adequate clothing. I drink probably two quarts of water a day. Fresh, cold water. But what about those people? And, and I sometimes feel like God isn't there for me in my life. How could you let this happen, God? Why don't you stop war? Why don't you stop discord? Why don't you stop all those things that I find so frustrating? Why don't you make my six-year-old behave? Why did you allow a man in that hotel to kill 50 pe or 60 people, effectively, and wound nearly 500, 400 and something? Why did God allow that to happen? I have lots of reasons to be angry. Why did God allow that driver to hit those pedestrians in Kensington in London this weekend? Why did God allow another hurricane to hit the southern United States yesterday? That one's so small, only 85 mile an hour winds. We didn't even hear about it in the news. But you can bet the people who experienced it didn't think it was very small. The world needs to know the power of Christ's love for every life. Every life. Not just for the ones who are like me or like my children or like my brothers and sisters in Christ, but all people, all, every single person. And you can't help every single person. I know that. I cannot help every single person. But there are plenty who God puts in my way who I can help. And I can let them know that God loves them and blesses their lives. Please get the movie The Shack. It will transform how you see God. How you come to know God and Christ and the Spirit and God's wisdom. It will bring you to a point where we all should have been all of our lives. And we've been in the same place as the man who experiences this thing in this movie. It's a lot better than my sermons. I'm sorry.
I cannot possibly do in a sermon what this movie does. But my sermons will help inform this movie in your lives, I hope. It's an odd name for a movie about God, The Shack. I figured it must have been a horror movie. I turned it on and thought, oh, this is going to be awful. And then all of a sudden, it was one of the most wonderful movies I have ever seen. And it is filled with tragedy and grief and healing and the loss of the desire to judge. We, we all need that in our lives. We need to know the power of Christ's love and his willingness to be merciful. And it really transcends who you and I are, believe me. All of us. But it doesn't mean we can't get closer and do a better job and know the one to whom we belong. Know the one to whom we belong in our hearts and in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.